Welcome to the Wideout Plow Hydraulic Circuit Demonstration utilizing Automation Studio simulation software. There are several different components that make up the Wideout Plow Hydraulic Circuit. There are eight solenoid cartridge valves which are labeled S1, S2, and S5 to S10. There are four wing relief valves which are labeled RV1 to RV4. There is one main pump relief valve which is labeled RV5. There is one crossover relief valve which is labeled CR1. There are four pilot operated check valves which are labeled PC1 to PC4. There is also a quill and two orifice plates which are labeled OP1 and OP2. Lastly there is a motor, pump, filter and reservoir which is commonly referred to as tank throughout this video demonstration. We will start by pressing the on-off button of the snowplow control. The red indicator light illuminates and the plow is ready for action. Pushing any function button except lower will activate the motor which turns the pump, pulling fluid from the reservoir through the filter and creates flow which is indicated by the moving arrows in the hydraulic diagram. We will now perform the raise function. We will begin by activating the raise button on the plow control. Hydraulic fluid from the tank will begin to flow through the pump, through the shifted S1 cartridge, and into the base of the lift ram, raising the plow. When the plow is fully raised, pressure will build to the relief setting of RV5 and then return to tank. We will now perform the lower function. We begin by activating the lower button on the snowplow control. This shifts the S2 cartridge and allows the weight of the snowplow to collapse the lift ram, forcing hydraulic fluid through the shifted S2 cartridge, past the quill, and back to tank. Note that by adjusting the quill inward, you will slow down the drop rate of the snowplow. We will now perform the angle left function. We begin by activating the left button on the snowplow control. Hydraulic fluid from the pump flows through the shifted S6 cartridge, extending the passenger side angle ram. The retracting driver side ram pushes the returning hydraulic fluid through the shifted S6 cartridge and back to tank. When the plow is fully angled, pump pressure will build to the RV5 relief setting and bypass directly to tank. We will now perform the angle right function. We begin by pushing the angle right button on the snowplow control. Hydraulic fluid from the pump flows through the shifted S5 cartridge, extending the driver side angle ram. The retracting passenger side ram pushes returning hydraulic fluid through the shifted S5 cartridge and back to tank. When the plow is fully angled, pump pressure will begin to build to the RV5 relief valve setting and bypass directly to tank. We will now perform the right wing extend function. We begin by pushing the right wing button on the snowplow control. Hydraulic fluid from the pump flows through the shifted S10 cartridge through PC3, applying pilot pressure to PC4 to the base end of the right wing ram. The extending ram pushes the return fluid through the rod end of the ram, past the orifice plate, through PC4, S9, and back to tank. When fully extended, the pump pressure will build to the RV3 wing relief valve setting and back to tank. We will now perform the right wing retract function. We begin by pushing the right wing button on the snowplow control. Hydraulic fluid from the pump 
flows through the shifted S9 cartridge, through PC4, applying pilot pressure to PC3, through the orifice to the rod end of the right wing ram. The retracting ram pushes the return fluid through the base end of the ram, through PC3, S10, and back to tank. When fully retracted, the pump pressure will build to the RV5 pump relief valve setting and directly back to tank. We will now perform the left wing extend function. We begin by pushing the left wing button on the snowplow control. Hydraulic fluid from the pump flows through the shifted S8 cartridge, through PC1, applying pilot pressure to PC2, to the base end of the left wing ram. The extending ram pushes the return fluid through the rod end of the ram, past the orifice plate, through PC2, S7, and back to tank. When fully extended, the pump pressure will build to the RV2 wing relief valve setting and directly back to tank. We will now perform the left wing retract function. We begin by pushing the left wing button on the snowplow control. A drop fluid from the pump flows through the shifted S7 cartridge, through PC2, applying pilot pressure to PC1, through the orifice plate to the rod end of the left wing ram. The retracting ram pushes fluid through PC1, S8, and back to tank. When fully retracted, the pump pressure will build to the RV5 pump relief valve setting and directly back to tank. We will now perform the scoop function. We begin by pushing the scoop button on the snowplow control. Hydraulic fluid from the pump flows through the shifted S8 and S10 cartridges through PC1 and PC3, applying pilot pressure to PC2 and PC4, then to the base end of the wing rams. The extending rams push the return fluid past the orifice plates through PC2, PC4, unshifted S7 and S9 cartridges, and then back to tank. When the wing rams are fully extended, the pump pressure will build to the RV2 and RV3 wing relief valve setting and directly back to tank. We will now perform the retract function. We begin by pushing the retract button on the snowplow control. Hydraulic fluid from the pump flows through the shifted S7 and S9 cartridges through PC2 and PC4, applying pilot pressure to PC1 and PC3, then through the orifice plates to the rod ends of the wing rams. The retracting rams push returning fluid through PC1, PC3, and unshifted S8 and S10 cartridges, then back to tank. When fully retracted, the pump pressure will build to the RV5 pump relief valve setting and directly back to tank. 